Well, you'll often hear me talking about the battle we are always engaged in when it comes to uh, black-owned media fighting for uh, resources, fighting for advertising. Uh, but we see this battle in all fields. We're, at, we're right now in this country, a black college graduate actually makes on average less than a white person with a high school diploma. Well, Taraji P. Henson was a, during, had an interview with Sirius XM Radio. They went out promoting The Color Purple opens Christmas Day. Uh, and, and she talked about uh, how hard this is. And she broke down uh, and, and said how uh, that she's almost even thought about leaving the business. Listen to this. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, mm. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sisters say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathing. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up, is a whole entire team behind That's us. Right. Yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million, no, that's not, that, that didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed, Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm, You're tired. I'm, a, I'm only human, and, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what I just did, and I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. It wears on you, you know? Because mm -hmm. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? What is it telling me? Yeah. And what does it tell me? Mm. Yeah. You know? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the fuck am I doing? I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. A, a number, a number of actresses have commented on this. Viola Davis oftentimes has talked about this here. In fact, um, uh, Taraji Henson in another discussion says she almost walked away from the color purple over the issue of pay. One of the things that people don't realize, I and mean, what she's talking about there, is when she talk, even when she's talking about $10 million, first of all, it ain't that many people getting those big paydays. Uh, when you talk about black actresses, they are oftentimes not even the lead. Uh, and so I've seen other people post that, that sometimes some of these folks be getting two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars for a role. And so now you talk about forty, fifty percent of the top for taxes, uh, business managers, lawyers, agents, publicists, uh, and they might be left with um, seventy-five, a hundred thousand dollars. And then guess what? You may not. You may only have one role for an entire year. And so she's talking about, again, the battle that black people have to play in Hollywood uh, to be paid properly. Uh, the thing here, Scott, is that this isn't just even a black female issue in Hollywood. We see this for black engineers, black lawyers, black doctors, black accountants, uh, entrepreneurs. I mean, it is a function of, of, of this society always wanting to pay black people less, less for our talent. Yeah. Systemic racism, right? I, I, I don't believe, and I fight for my income as an equity partner at a big law firm every year, every 15 months. And, you know, you get tired of arguing that someone that doesn't look like me who has the same book of business I have gets paid more than me. Roger Hintz is right. You get tired of fighting. You, you, you know, when you're on top, right, and you eating at the highest level in your profession, what you don't see and what she's really talking about is how hard it is to be extraordinary 
as a person, uh, as someone who happens to be a person of color. Because I compete against everybody. She competes against everybody, not just black people. But to stay on top, underneath that iceberg, you see the pain and the disappointment and the hard work and how tired you are just to fight to stay on top and compete against those that don't look like you and to have to fight to get paid as much or to fight to get paid as much as possible that, that in comparison, right, the talent around you that doesn't look like you isn't smarter than you, isn't better than you, doesn't work harder than you, isn't more extraordinary than you, isn't more excellent than you. And so the fight that she's talking about is not the fight for excellence, but the fight to be paid for your excellence as someone that happens to be a person of the color. It's the melanin in my skin. That's the challenge with people that don't look like me. Can they value me as they value themselves? Or does the melanin in my skin get in the way of my excellence and equality? That's really the challenge for all of us who are at the top of our profession, whether it's Taraji, me, or my colleagues on, the, uh, on, on this show. Um, uh, this, was, this, 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 this was an interview that she did with the SAG After, After, After Foundation, uh, where she also talked about this. Here, listen to this. Best acting business decision that you made. So whether that be representation, firing everybody after Cookie, <laughs> everybody had to fucking go. Where is my deal? Where is my commercial? Cookie was top of the fashion game. Where is my endorsement? What did you have set up? for after this. That's why y'all haven't seen me in so long. They had nothing set up. All they wanted was another cookie show. And I said, I'll, I'll do it, but it has to be right. The, perp the people deserve, she's too beloved for y'all to fuck it up. And so when they didn't get it right, I was like, well, that's it. And then they had nothing else. You're all fucking fired. I mean, I'm going to say this, though. It took me years to get there because I did have a bit of Stockholm Syndrome. Talk about it. Baby, it's very real. You are the prize. Don't you ever forget that. You are the talent. You are so the thing here, uh, Rebecca, which I think is just what was most fundamental for people, is you have to understand your worth and you have to be willing to walk away from certain things if you believe you are not being paid fairly. So Taraji um, referenced um, when she played Cookie in Empire, and I just want to note that Terrence Howard just filed a lawsuit over the wages that he received while he was in, in on Empire, and he's in part blaming um, the creative artist agency um, who was representing him at the time, um, and he's making the claim that they weren't um, that they weren't fairly representing um, his interests. Um, with his role on Empire. That's one thing. We've also heard Steve Harvey talk about in the past, that instead of uh, paying your team 30%, get a um, contract attorney that's actually doing the deal instead of having um, three or four different um, representatives in that deal as a way to cut down an overhead. But something I also want to mention here is that uh, Monique exposed this. You know, years ago, she exposed it, and she received a lot of ridicule. She talked about she only got $50,000 um, for um, her role in the movie Precious. And, and then she was asked to do stuff outside of her contract, and she claimed that she was asked by both Oprah and, um, and Tyler Perry um, to, um, go and, to go and promote the film, even though that wasn't in her contract. And she said, no, I'm not doing that because that's not within my contract. And then when she went up against Netflix, when Netflix, I believe at the time, offered the comedian Amy Schumer a $20 million deal, and um, the 
deal for Monique, I think wasn't even $2 million. And, you know, people do have to speak up because this happens all the time. It doesn't just happen to black women. It also happens to black men of where uh, black folks in America, in our society, we are expected just to show up, show out, work twice as hard, be overly stressed, make a way out of no way, but then we aren't properly compensated. So we do have to figure out so how do we, t is there opportunities for us to take agency and actually to negotiate our worth? Do we need the greater black community um, to help and support when these things happen and do a protest, do a, a, a economic boycott? Um, but as a community, if one fails, we all fail. And we have to have that, um, that viewpoint of solidarity if we want to make sure that black folks in America are actually getting their worth. Because if we don't demand it, it will be never given to us. We have to take it. But we also have to understand, Robert, who is the show and who is the business. And I think part of the problem that often happens is people rely on others to do things. And I totally understand what Taraji was saying there. You know, where were the fashion deals? Where were the commercial deals? Where, where were those different things? Uh, and that was, that's also putting your career in, in somebody else's hands. Uh, I, there was another actress, uh, I, I'm not going to name, who fired her whole team. Uh, folks were turning deals down that she wasn't being, being, being made aware of. And we were having this conversation, and she was asking me, you know, how do I run my business? I said, first of all, you just used the proper phrase. I run my business. I am not going to, and in fact, um, uh, uh, the singer Seven and I had this conversation when she went independent, when she was running her business. I think for so many people, uh, what too often happens is they, they're letting other people uh, control that. Uh, and as Taraji said, oh, well, if I'm, I'm not taking deals, y'all ain't getting your percentage. Uh, but you got to be challenging those folks uh, on what are you actually doing? How are you, how are you earning? If you're an agent, oh, you're just not going to sit here and feast on the deal that I signed. No, what are the other deals uh, that you're going out and getting? I remember firing uh, the very prominent agency, and I said, you ain't brought me shit. I said, uh, I'm out here cultivating relationships, and you ain't set up one meeting. No, nah, y'all ain't getting a fee of my stuff because you ain't done a damn thing. Too many people, whether they're in media or entertainment, uh, Robert, refuse to understand and learn the business of the business. They're too focused on the show in show business. Well, you're completely correct. I think black families and the black community in general, they, they teach us how to struggle best. And it's not, not an indictment against. It's the best that we know. They teach you to work twice as hard to get half as far. Uh, they teach you to make the, uh, the make the best out of anything you can get. You need to show up first, work harder than everybody, and be the last one out the door. And we are great at doing exactly that. But what we don't talk about, what we don't teach in this generation, is how to work and monetize that. As you said, the business side of all these apparatuses. And because of this, it's been far too easy throughout the years to, uh, as Silo said, get them, a, uh, get them a nigga, a brand new nigga, how brand your tap shoes even if your feet bigger. Because they know they can replace you. Just as when Terrence Howard was in the Iron Man movie, he came back and asked for more money for Iron Man 2. They replaced him with Don Cheadle and that like nothing happened. They didn't even explain that they were switching black dudes. They just showed up a different black dude for the next 10 years. And, and, and then, and then hold up, hold up, hold up. And then hit Don and said, you got to decide by 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Don was at his child's birthday party, and Don said, well, damn, can I at least get 24 hours? And they were like, yeah, okay, fine. But they, they put this, like, no, you got to decide yes or no at this number now. He was literally at his child's birthday party. And if wow. he hadn't, they would have rolled it straight down their Rolodex to whoever the next black dude was, and they would have gave them that role. They don't see us as being individualized talents. They don't see us as being individualized uh, artists who are creating and who are uh, who have an independent value. It's almost as if they feel they need to, when they feel they need to check a box, it is, well, who is the next most famous black dude? Even right now with Jonathan Majors being fired by Marvel, there's all sorts of talks about who the next black dude is they're going to replace his character with, as opposed to recognizing what he individually brought to 
into that role and saying, well, if Ezra Miller gets second chances and uh, Robert Downey Jr. gets second chances and Amanda Heard gets second chances, why didn't he get a second chance? And, and this goes in all fields. Let's talk about uh, media and news uh, that all of us here can talk about. Uh, you can go on one of these major networks. You can be the most prepared uh, individual on earth, and they will have you debating um, the runner-up from Miss Ohio uh, about you know immigration <laughs> reform or something. And you can run circles around them every time they put you on. You can just knock them right in the mouth every time they put you on. But then two weeks le or two or three months later, when they're announcing who the new contributors are going to be, it's going to be the little white girl from, who was uh, the runner-up from Miss Ohio because she has a smile and wears a, uh, uh, and blonde hair, etc. This goes into every field. They expect us to be the sharecroppers of American society. And until we have a bargaining chip to put ourselves forward, until we have the economic ability to affect markets the way that other groups do, we will continue to be on the chitlin circuit of American economics and politics. Well, um, I'll, I'll say this here. First of all, Kiki Palmer uh, posted uh, this message regarding this whole issue. Go to my iPad. She said, the entertainment industry is just like any other industry. We run businesses to keep our brands afloat, us being the brand business. And it's that team of company members that decrease any assumed large lump sum. This includes monthly expenses just like everyone else. In the words of Biggie, more money, more problems. Uh, she then went on to say, this is why no one can really have one job anymore. People working outside of the entertainment industry may do Uber Eats, Postmates, account, accountant part-time, substitute teaching. She says, for an, entertainer, for an entertainment career, you may be like me, an actor, influencer, host, speaker, etc. I keep a job because I have to. Ha ha. We all work multiple jobs and we may, we may like some, but also because we have to. To be successful and live in America, it's literally this way because of the cash to expense ratio. And this is why entrepreneurship is so important, but that in itself is expensive. Having one job for anyone is not really an option, no matter what industry, unless you are like the top, top, top earner. And I mean, that's like Bill Gates and them, I suppose. I don't know because I can't, can't relate. Ha ha. So, so, so let me say this, which, which is, and I think what all of you have talked about and what it requires, and I think too often, uh, to your point, Robert, uh, these are not the conversations uh, that we have. And the conversations that we don't have is understanding, again, I'm going back to the business of the business. I'm going back to the notion of multiple revenue streams. I'm talking about when you're in these situations, uh, Scott, you get it. You can't have a successful law firm and think you're going to survive having one client. If all of a sudden that client gets ticked off and moves their business, now you're screwed. The job is to go get multiple clients. Has to be the same thing. If you're talking about entertainment, you got to be thinking about movies and television and, yes, speeches and social media, things along those lines. Uh, and I think uh, so many of us, when you look at these record deals that people accept, so many of us, we take bad deals because we're so enamored with, oh, my God, I signed a deal with, I signed a deal with Sony, I signed a deal with Columbia, with Arista, I signed a deal with Motown. But a lot of our people, we see them on TV once unsung, they ain't read the contract, never saw it, never read it, and they don't even realize, uh, they get, Kirk Franklin did, a, did an interview the other day, how in his early deals, he signed away 100% of his publishing. 100%. Because yeah. he had a lawyer who was an entertainment lawyer. They were like just, they just heard lawyer like, well, you could do this deal, whole deal. So it's understanding all of that. But the thing that people also got to do is have a, have, a, have a focus, understanding is me, Inc. What I mean by that is, I look at every, Oprah talked about this here, and I agree with, I look at every damn invoice that comes across my desk. And I'll be like, what's this? I ain't paying this. I got some, somebody right now who's inventorying all of my uh, equipment in there. Because you know what? I'm not going to be paying for shit that get broken in 2024. If you got it and it worked and it come back broke, your ass paying for it. Now, I guess stuff happens, but the job is to take care of stuff because ain't no company buying a replacement. It's me. I'm the company. And a lot of people don't take ownership of their lives. And so I dare say to any entertainer, Anybody who's in any of these fields, I don't care what it is, learn the business of your business. Otherwise, you're out here busting your butt and you're sending other people's children to school 
and they getting paid, and then you're going to be left with nothing. And people said, oh, my God, I love that, that show you were in. I love that movie you were in. Terrence Howard talked about it. He got paid, uh, was it 12 grand for Hustle and Flow? It was an independent film. I mean, these, these things actually happen. Here's the question. Did you get paid on the back end? And guess what he also said? He said that he hasn't been getting any residuals from the music because the folks who produced the movie, they said the song was the artist DJ, his character, which meant they've been getting paid, not him. We had better learn to read the fine print of these deals as well. And I'm going to say this last thing right here, which is hard, Scott, for some people. We got to get over white validation. Mm -hmm. We got to understand that you might want to go sign a book deal, but if you are a celebrity, you could actually probably make more money pushing that book yourself than, frankly, going out there, getting a big advance, and all you're doing is working to pay that sucker back to that publisher. You're working your butt off to sell them copies for them. It's also meaning owning your content. It means you being able to license deals as well. It means you going out there to broker deals. Not everybody's going to understand the business. Not everybody wants to be a producer, wants to be an owner. I understand that. But what I'm saying is this. The worst thing in the world is if we, as black people, if we are always the show and somebody else is the business. Scott, real quick. Uh, you you got you to sign your own checks and you got to write your own checks. But, Roman, whatever the industry is, I don't think you can just be an artist or a lawyer. You got to understand the business of your business. Yeah. Right? You you got to. You, yeah, you I mean, are. I'm not a lawyer, but I read my contracts. As a matter of fact, I was catching stuff and I was like, um, come here, this line right here. My, what that, what that mean? Right. No, I mean, that, no, no. I, well, well, actually, I was interpreting the line, and I was challenging my agent and my lawyer going, how y'all missed that? And, I, and right. I read line by line by line, so I knew every piece of that contract. And I've represented, watch this, I've represented my share of athletes and entertainers over 32 years in big law. It's not my specialty, but I've certainly done a lot of those deals. Let me tell you something, Roland. If, 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 if I hear one more time from someone in the business, in your business or in the sports business, well, what do you think? Well, I haven't read the contract. Should I sign it, Scott, or should I not? Should you sign it or should you not? I'm not that's a business decision. I do law. You're going to read it line by line, and I'll answer all your questions, right? But you got cats out here so much in the game and love the game that they don't even want to read the contract. They want a lawyer or an agent to tell them, should I sign it? Did you review it? If you say I should sign it, then I'm going to sign it, right? I need the money. Literally. Literally. It's ridiculous. You're, you're going to be in this business and not read a contract that's going to pay you for a short period of time. We call it short money, right? That's why you got to have multiple streams of income. Even if you're a lawyer, you need to be invested in real estate. If you're going to get into the media and do commentary, you need to get paid for your commentary, a lot or a little or whatever the case might be, because you only got so long in this life to make money. And, and for me, as an equity partner in a law firm, I don't get a pension. When I'm done, when I hang it up, I'm done. Right. So I got to take care of my money. Right. I got to invest in real estate. I got to invest in other businesses and stuff and to take pieces. Because if I don't, at 70 or 65, when I hang it up, that's it. I'm living on what, what I made and what I saved, period. And so many professions are like that. So you're a business. You got to learn your business, well, period. I, well, I tell you what, when I was at TV One, uh, we were doing news, we were doing the show News One Now. And every time we would do, we would, we would go shoot something, we had to hire an outside production company. And that was always a cost. Uh, and I'm looking at the budget, and I'm realizing, man, look, we're we not going to be able to have money to go do this stuff later in the year. So I, start, I, was, I was actually buying my own, my own equipment while I was there. 
And I told somebody this the other day who called me. They were complaining about a deal. They and I said, stop. I said, I need you to look at them as your personal venture capitalist. They going to fund your actual business. And that's really what the momentum. So when I was at CNN and TV One, I had CNN, TV One, Tom Joyner, I had my own speeches and books. So I had five revenue streams. And I had, with his, I had this white producer at CNN who was kind of very paternalistic in his, with his tone. I said, say, bro, hold up. I'm going to let you know. Y'all just number three out of five revenue streams. You ain't even one or two. I said, so anything happened, hell, I'll just do this right here. Well, when I was at TV One, I, so I started buy, I bought my own cameras and stuff. And so then I said, all right, I'm going to do a deal with y'all. I ain't going to charge y'all no kid fee for my cameras and stuff, for my cameras and my switcher. I said, but if we do any projects using my gear, I co-own the content. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. why did I do that? I knew the show was going to get canceled one day. But guess what? They also, when people call, I think we did a Frankie Beverly May special. All of the concert video in the special, I shot. Right. So when somebody called them to license that footage, they had to call me too. That's understanding the business of the business. All right, folks. Appreciate it. Robert, Rebecca, Scott, thank you so very much.